Right, welcome back. So, there's a bit of an echo in here. Um, what we're going to do is have a go at fitting this FJ Dynamics uh, auto steer kit on the Bateman sprayer. The sprayer has never had auto steer, it's not auto steer ready, so hence we're going to fit this kit on. This is the steering wheel, uh, that goes in the middle. Steering wheel bolts onto that, that goes onto the onto this shaft. And then this is the screen for our auto steer display and guidance. That's the ram mount for mounting it. So the first thing I'm going to do is fit the steering wheel. So we've got to take the old one off and then yeah, bolt the new one on. Hopefully just as simple as that. Right, so as you've just seen, I got the steering wheel off uh, with a bit of persuasion from a chisel and a lever bar because the shaft is tapered, so he was pretty well seized on there. Um, with the kit, you get a whole range of different uh, adapters. Need to stun. Yeah, you get loads of different adapters with different splines and different sh size holes holes, different size holes, but the one that we're going to use to uh, yeah, fit it on the sprayer is the one with the tapered hole in it. So we shall slot that on there like that, put the washer and the nut in there, and put that bit back together again, I guess. Hopefully the steering wheel won't be too high. So steering wheel is on, it all seems to fit okay so far. Um, so this is the bit, that black unit there, that's the motor that's going to turn the steering wheel. Now that needs to be fixed rigid so it can't twist and then when the motor's working it will turn the steering wheel and not this. So yeah this could take a little bit of uh, working out how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to take this pl plastic back off again what I just put on because we've got to fit one of these brackets, either that one, you get a sort of variation of different brackets, that one or probably that one that I'm going to use. Yeah, so that needs to clamp to the pole and then that needs to bolt screw to the to that black unit that was twisting around to make it to stop it from twisting. Right, we're getting somewhere. I managed to get that clamped on there, which is fitted quite well. So then that's not stopped that unit from twisting and it's just the steering wheel that turns. Uh, only thing is I might move it because that plug's meant to be around the back. All right, so I just moved it. The plug socket is now around the other side, which is where all the wiring's gonna go. Tighten that up. Um, the only bit I've got, only thing I've got a slight problem with is I'm not sure how all this cowling is gonna fit back on. Uh, with that in the way, so we might have to modify that a little bit. Yeah, so I'll probably leave these bits of plastic off for now until I work out how I'm going to get them back on. But so far, so good. That is the steering wheel on. Actually, I've still got to put a couple more bolts in there. But apart from that, it's looking good. So the next thing I've got to do is work out where I'm going to put the screen, but um, there's not many places to fit it to be honest, probably end up being over here somewhere, if I can screw it to the side of here, the ram mount, but yeah, so that's the next thing to do, but I'll do that tomorrow night, it's Monday evening, Monday the 16th of May, and I'll just do a bit every evening kind of thing. Right, Tuesday evening, so we're going to have a go at mounting the screen tonight. That is the screen. That's the ram mount that it fixes it to wherever we mount the ram mount. We're not really spoilt for choice on where to put it. So I am thinking right about there somewhere. Hopefully that will work. Here, yeah, I think that might work. There, just like that. Light's not very good in here, is it? You can't see very well. All right, we've got a bit of light on the situation now. You might be able to see. So. 
I'm going to drill a couple of holes, or four holes. Right about the first one is going to go right there. Oh yeah, I think that should work quite well there, as long as all the wires fit in okay. Right, I've put the receiver bar together. That's got to go on the roof. The only thing is, is that there's actually nowhere to bolt it to on this roof. Whereas normally on a tractor cab, you have a couple of bolts in the cab roof uh, for lifting the cab off, but this hasn't got that, so. And then those, that bracket, not that you can see. That bracket there, that, that's where it bolts, it's supposed to bolt to the roof. But what I'm thinking about doing is bolting it to this metal bar right here. That's if the cables will reach, to be honest. That's the other thing I need to work out. It's whether all the cables from here will reach into the cab. They should do. Right, we're making progress, or I'm making progress, with this auto steer kit. I'm almost done. Well, I've got everything bolted on. I've just got lots of cables that need sorting out and tidying up. Uh, I've got the screen switched on, look. I've got to do some kind of um, putting all the measurements and that for the for the machine and uh, run through some calibrations. I'll show you what I've done with the fitting the, the domes. The other thing I've been doing is sorting out the reversing camera for the sprayer because that stopped working. I've got a new cable for it because it's the cable that is knackered. Yeah, so I've bolted the receiving domes on the back here. Just like I said, I've just got to do lots of cable tying. Got cables going into the back of the cab. I've got the cab lifted up so I could feed them all through into the top of the cab. The only thing I haven't fitted just yet is the steering angle sensor. This, along with this plate goes in here. I've got to bolt it on there. And then it somehow knows which angle the, the wheels are pointing at. But I was going to try it without that to begin with and see how well it works. Because the only way I can get cables into the cab is through the roof. There's no way of getting cables up through the floor. Yeah, so the next thing for me to do is to take it outside and try it. We've got uh, 26 satellites there. We're not going to be running on RTK. We're just going to be running on Egnos to begin with and see how that goes. This roof's quite cool the way it goes up and down. It's got an air ram and to make it go up you undo the latches and then start the engine and it pressurizes it up with air and then to let it back down again. I'm going to move out of the way. It press this button here. Oh, and it comes down pretty quick. You just got to watch your fingers. I'm going to get the ladder out of there. Right, welcome back. So, I'm out putting some fertilizer, some liquid in, on some grass fields. Um, this is the second field that I've done this afternoon. Oh, this big hole there. Watch the hole. I hit that. I hit that hole when I was mowing, and I nearly hit the roof. So, I won't forget that one in a hurry. Uh, yeah. So. I've been using the auto steer. We had to change a few sensitivity settings and things like that, get it all set up. But I think I've cracked it now, so we'll, uh, I'm still going around the headland, and then uh, and then I'll show you what I'll show you how it works. We'll just negotiate this pole. It's the trouble with uh, fertilising with the boom. You've got to go around the poles. Right, we'll get lined up. I've just finished the headland. We'll, um, we've got to do an AB line, so I'll show you that. So we click on start. And which one is it? This one, I think. Straight line. We can either do straight line or curved line. Uh, straight line. If I press A now, and we will start driving, it's dropped a pin. I am fertilising at the same time as marking out the... AB line. 
But yeah, we're, I've, and I've cut the, so the sprayer is 24 meters, but I've set the track width down to uh, 23.5 because we're not running on RTK, we're running on Egnos. So but it was working okay in the other field. Yeah, so I'm coming up to the other end of the field now. Right there, look. I'm gonna press B, save. Uh, I've gotta call it something, we'll just call it that for now. Oh, that already exists. I must have pressed the same button in the other field. Press save. Just turn the booms off. Yeah, we'll just call it um, V, save. So that's it. We've got all our AB lines, look, to follow. We'll turn around. We'll go turn around and see if we can get locked onto a line. Miss that one, there's a pole in the way. Right, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna switch me, me sprayer on. I'm gonna get reasonably close to the line. Which, where is it? There we go, look. And then I just have to press auto steer, start, and we're away. Just gonna turn the steering wheel. We're away, look. Following that line, that's what it looks like on my screen. So we're gonna go up here, and then we're gonna come down, and in between those two. But it's doing the job anyway. Right, so I've just turned around at the end, at the end of the field now. I did go around the pole as well. Right, we'll pull forward, switch the boom on, press auto steer. There we go, look. We're on it. It's weird seeing the steering wheel move by itself. See that we're going up between those other two um, lines quite nicely. We're not missing any bits. It's working out just right. I'm going along at 14k. And it seems to be just working absolutely fine. It's not struggling at all. I mean, on a normal auto steer that's integrated, it's doing this. It's going from left to right a little bit. It's just that you don't notice it because the steering wheel's not moving. Right, I'm done with work for today, so I'm going to edit this video tonight. Um, let me just end the job, just so that it's safe whilst we go down the road. And yeah, any questions, stick them in the box below, and I'll see if I can help you out. And that's almost perfect timing with the rain as well. It's now started raining to watch the fertiliser in.